Hi there and welcome to Little Garden on the Prairies. So this I believe is kind of my first update on what's been going on in my garden this season. We've had a really crazy spring where it's just been cold. We've got lots of rain, which is awesome, but it's also been super windy. We've had just some crazy windy days. Even today, it's supposed to be nice and hot, but the wind's gonna be pretty high. So hopefully my sound is okay and I don't have to do any voiceovering on this tour. But I wanted to show you, because I'm excited to share a couple of new things going on in the garden. I've kind of revamped my main two beds. You can kind of see them behind me, I think. Um, I've converted from my old mineral tubs to some real uh, live garden beds, which I'm super excited about. And I've also just been testing out a solar irrigation system, a drip system that I've set up on a bunch of my containers here in the garden. So I'm going to take you on a tour and show you what's going on. So here are my new raised garden beds and I am really loving them. I think that they really add a lot of class to the garden. They look so uh, high end and I'm just really happy with them so far. I also was able to make use of this arbor that I took from my mom's garden. She passed away in 2018 and when we sold the house I was able to bring this to my yard and now it's placed in the perfect spot I think because it's going to act as a trellis for my tomato plants. So my first garden bed came from Growbox and I just want to do a shout out. Thank you to them for giving me this for free to use in the garden, no strings attached didn't say I had to do any videos but I really want to just do a shout out to them they are a great Canadian company they have nice quality grow boxes here and I am going to probably do you know a more in-depth video on it but I just wanted to show you this one here and another great Canadian company here is Sprout Box I was able to pick this one up at a discounted price which was awesome and they also have a great product I'm gonna do maybe a comparison video of the two, just to show you, you know, the differences and my opinion on them. And hopefully that'll be coming to the channel soon down the road. So for the last few years, if you've been following my channel, you know I had these mineral tubs that were black in color. I had 12 of them set up here in a similar fashion, doing my tomatoes, my cucumbers and peppers. And I just found they were just a little hard to work with. I wasn't really maximizing on the space. So I made the decision this spring to remove them and go with these grow boxes. And big shout out to my husband for helping me fill these up, which was a challenge, but we were able to repurpose a lot of things around the yard to get these filled. And these things are full of a whole variety over here we got onions, tomatoes, herbs. I got some beans coming. I've also got a couple patches of beets, more tomatoes at the end. So I'm kind of following the square gardening method in my planting just to make sure I'm spreading things out properly, but I can see that you can grow a lot of stuff in a very small space. So I'm, I think these are gonna be great for the years to come this one I got started a little bit late this year it was almost I think the first week of June before I even got my tomatoes and peppers in the grow box here because of the weather it was just so cold and windy and we were making trips to the lake so I kept putting it off but I finally got them in here and I got some cucumbers coming now they're just starting to pop through so it feels like I'm a little bit late this year, but I think everything's going to catch up now. The weather is hopefully going to stay warm and everything should really take off. So I'm just trying to downsize and make everything easier in my garden. So this is kind of where I'm trying to go with everything. The last few years I've been just keep adding these tubs and growing more and more stuff. I got them spread out all over the yard. <laughs> it's just was coming, becoming too hard to try to manage and keep everything properly watered so I'm trying to condense to a smaller space and be more efficient with my gardening. I have a lot of other things going on in my life that I want to have time for so I don't want it to be all about gardening but 
still want to be able to enjoy as much as I can and share it with you whenever I can. So here we have my tubs with the lettuces growing. I've harvested the lettuce a couple times. We've been eating salads in the evenings, which has been awesome. Two tubs of carrots. These have been growing really good, as you can see. So I spaced these out using my seeding square. You've probably seen that video. And it really does make a difference because you can see how nicely spread apart these carrots are. I'm not going to have to thin them out too much. So I think I'm going to have a nice crop there. So this part of the garden is kind of the area I'm not so proud of. As you can see, my potatoes under straw are overtaken with quack grass. The roost out method has worked so great for me in the past years and just covering up the area with straw has suppressed the weeds and my potatoes have done really well. But this year, just with the cold, wet spring, the quack grass just totally got away on me and we did get the potatoes planted and they are in here. They're just starting to all come through. So I'm just kind of waiting until they got some good growth on them. I can identify where everything is in the rows and then um, I will get in here and try to get rid of as much quack grass as I can. This stuff is just so invasive. The roots grow sideways so it's really hard to uh, really get them pulled out and removed but I do have some more straw so we can get the weeding under control. We'll just pack on the straw hopefully and hopefully have a good potato crop. I did get a video earlier this spring of planting my onions in these containers and they are doing awesome. As you can see they're growing really well. Again the quack grass was totally invading my space here. I put down some weed barrier to try to stop it from coming in. Had to do a whole bunch of whipper snipping in the back here because the grass was, as you can see, it's growing probably five, six feet high. It was just hanging over my onions. So we got it all cut back. I got some zucchini going. I got some ground cherries growing here that I started from seed. They got froze when they first uh, went out this spring, but they managed to come back. So I'm pretty excited because this is one of the favorite things I like to grow for my grandson once these things start producing berries and those little wrappers. It's super fun to pick and you know unwrap and find that juicy berry inside. So I'm looking forward to that. Over here I have a whole bunch of my grow bags that I had started peas in. And as you can see it's a very sad situation. Everything was coming along, growing well. I started putting cages on everything. And I believe I have a rodent, suspecting it's a gopher, because I see a few of them around here, came in and just chewed everything off. As soon as it gets to any decent height, he comes in and chews her right down to the stubs here. So I am a little disappointed with that, but I think I will just need to do some netting or something just to be a little more proactive next year and make sure that I'm protecting them. I may start another batch here because it's still time to maybe get some peas going and see if we can uh, have some success with some peas this year. It was suggested to me by another local garden that comfrey is a good way to create a barrier around your garden to keep weeds from coming in. And as you can see I've been transplanting from an original patch along the edge here and it is just huge this year. I think it has been working. I just need to spread it out and spread some more over in that area there, but it does create a nice barrier here to keep the quack grass and stuff from coming in. I've also been chopping it down to make some comfrey tea fertilizer for the garden, throwing it into my compost bin because it's a good accelerator in your compost and hopefully be drying some for making salves and in my soaps. So I also repurposed some of my black tubs that came from my garden bed into a couple spots to grow strawberries and things were coming along great and I can see that I'm also having a rodent issue here as well. I've had so many strawberries just almost ripe enough to pick and they'll come out and somebody's beat me to it. So I guess I'll have to do some netting on my strawberries here so that hopefully we can enjoy some of these this summer. 
So this area here is what I used to call my lasagna garden bed. And all along this fence line here, I had a lasagna garden going where, you know, I piled on the organic materials every fall, every spring, planted different perennials. I like to do my herbs here, my pollinator type flowers and stuff that's, you know, I can do for my teas, salves, soap. So I have a whole variety of stuff that I was growing here. Once again, I'm trying to find ways to minimize the work in my garden. So when I cleaned up this area and got rid of the black tubs that were set up here, I took a few of them and set them up along this fence line. And that is where I am now planting a variety of different things. I'm just whippersnipping around with the whippersnipper once a week. It's a lot easier to maintain. But the only thing is, you know, the watering. It takes a lot more water to keep containers uh, properly watered. So this is where I have set up this new solar uh, drip system that I want to share with you today, hoping that it's going to really um, help me out with my watering. So this is what this setup looks like here. And of course we have the solar panel that uh, draws the power from the sun. So you also need to have some kind of a container to put the water in that it's gonna draw from to water your plants. So I have an old water cooler container here that works well. It's got a small opening that fits everything I need, but you know, it doesn't create a big uh, breeding spot for mosquitoes. So the two parts that go in there is the filter that will draw the water out and like I said it's got a filter to keep particles from getting into your lines and then it's got a couple sensors here that will um, sense if the water level is too low if there's some kind of malfunction it will stop it from working which is great this has some weights in it so that you can keep it at the bottom of the water so I've just filled this whole thing up now to the top it's got a few modes that you can set so this has a everyday watering feature or every three days. And from there you can pick how long it's gonna water for, whether it's a minute, five minutes, 10 minutes. So I have been doing it on one day for 10 minutes, just to see how that goes. It's running right now. And then you can just stick this in the dirt or tie it to a post. It does come with some screws. You can secure it somewhere as long as it is in a area that's going to get the full amount of sunlight for me it just works right to stick it into this jug like this and it's going to get lots of sun so let's check out and see how it's doing on the watering so the system comes with these emitters here that you can see that you just stick into your containers one of these works great in a small size pot because i have these bigger containers i've set up two of them you can see the water just creates a nice drip feature. So this will run for 10 minutes into my containers every day. And hopefully that moisture spreads out enough to keep everything well watered. So I have my Cosmos here that I started from seed indoors this spring. As you can see, they're starting to bloom. I've spotted some bees here already, so that's great. These are zinnias that I also started from seed indoors this spring. And again, I've set up two of the drips here. So over here, I have a couple things that I started using the winter sowing method. I got my chamomile, which is growing like a weed. I got a bunch of sweet peas here in the back. I just can't believe how this chamomile has just taken over this whole container. So I've just set up one drip in the middle that is gonna be running in the center here. Hopefully that will be enough moisture for everything. Here is where I have some mint growing. I like to dry my mint for tea and to use in different uh, recipes for my, my natural products, soap and salves. I'm trying a little different emitters here. These are bubblers that didn't come with the kit, but I thought maybe if they had enough pressure, they would maybe give a wider uh, range of watering, but they don't seem to be bubbling like they normally would, but they are dripping pretty good here. So they are providing some moisture. Here is my calendula plants, which I also started using the winter sowing method and they are doing fantastic. They're loving all the, 
the moisture they've been getting and now they're enjoying some sun and again I tried using these uh, different bubblers in here that are basically just doing a drip feature as well but like I said they are getting everything wet I can see the the moisture is spreading so I think this is going to work great and then the end of the line here is my sunflowers so they are getting a nice drip here with these emitters that come with the kit they're right at the end of the line and they are still you know benefiting and getting a good drip here and as you can see it is spreading out so it should catch all three of these in the pot here so yeah hopefully coming into the yard these sunflowers will be you know a really nice focal point I have this rock that has been passed all the way back from my great-grandmother's yard in Laverna Saskatchewan which is you know three hours from here it came from her yard to my grandmother's yard she used it as a, a doorstep at the front of the door then my mom and dad scooped it up moved it to their farm for 10 20 years and then when they sold the farm and retired 20 years ago they brought it here and we finally got it set up in a spot where you know you can really see it and appreciate it so it's a really cool rock with some really cool history to it so I hope you enjoyed my garden tour here in the yard. It's just really nice to see such green, lush everything. We've been cutting grass. We've cut the grass more times this year than we did all year last year. Everything was brown. It was a real struggle to keep things alive. But this year, some rain, some cool temperatures has actually been a real benefit for us on the farm. It keeps the grasshoppers at bay. Other than some quack grass that I have to fight with, that is pretty much all and it's not too bad. I'm really hoping to continue to kind of downsize and make my garden a little easier to manage. I got another irrigation system planned for this grow box here, so I'll be working on that soon. So I hope you will keep on watching, check in on the progress in my garden and things that are going on here. Please don't forget to smash the like button, leave me a comment, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos coming to the channel. Thanks for watching.